Next up in the world of calculus, modeling and optimization. This is going to be section 4.4 from the Finney Demana calculus textbook. Let's get into it. Here's some questions. Question one. Let's take this roll of fence and I'm going to roll it out, put a little fence around my garden and I want to have the most amount of area on the inside. So what should my dimensions of my garden be? I don't want to have a super skinny garden where I can only plant one row of beans. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try to figure this one out. First, a few definitions. X by Y will be my rectangle. Area is base times height times Y. Perimeter, there's two X's, there's two Y's. I add them up. I'm trying to maximize the area. I'm trying to maximize X times Y. The roll of fence is 100 feet long, so my perimeter is 100. 2x plus 2y is 100. Simplify this equation, divide everything by 2. Perimeter is x plus y equals 50. You can solve this equation for x or y. I'm going to solve it for y. I'm going to subtract x on both sides. y is going to be 50 minus x. I'm going to substitute this y value into my area equation in pink. My area is x times y, but instead of y, 50 minus x. This is the formula that I'm trying to maximize, so this is the formula I'm going to play around with. I need to max this, and the maxes occur when the derivative equals zero. So I'm going to find the derivative of this pink equation, a prime. You could do the product rule here, but I think it's just going to be easier to go ahead and distribute the x into the parentheses, 50x minus x squared. Now take the derivative using the power rule. A prime is then 50 minus 2x. Maxes occur when the derivative equals 0, I said. So set this equation equal to 0. 0 equals 50 minus 2x. Subtract 50 from both sides. Divide by negative 2. x equals 25. x equals 25 is a critical point. I don't know if it's a max or a min. I have to verify this. I'm going to verify with a sign chart. I want to pick a point to the left of 25. Pick a point to the right of 25 and plug them into f prime. Something to the left of 25 would be 0. 50 minus 2 times 0. That's going to be a positive number. Something to the right. I don't know. Pick whatever you want. A number to the right. Plug in the 50 minus 2 times x. It's going to be a negative. There's going to be a max at 25. There's a max because the derivative, a prime, goes from positive to negative. So you have a max of 25, but you also need to check your endpoints. In this case, your endpoints would be 0 and 50. So if you did x times y, your area is going to be 0. Well, we also could have had y equals 0 and x equals 50. But again, your area equals 0. So in that case, you actually don't have any area. So the best x value that I would want to have, which would be my base, is going to be 50. Excuse me, I meant to say 25. The max is at 25. And then to get your y value, you just simply plug it back into the equation. Here in red, y equals 50 minus x. x is 25. 50 minus 25 is 25. So your dimensions are 25 by 25. It's actually a square. It's not a rectangular area. So your perimeter, 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, covers your 100-foot roll of fence. And you're maximizing the area, 25 times 25. Gives you the most, most amount of vegetables you can put in that garden. Question two. So for your memory, the volume of a cylinder is area to base times height. That's going to be volume equals pi r squared, since the area of the base is a circle, times height h. And we were given that the height plus the circumference must be 30. The formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So I'm going to get rid of this c, make it h plus 2 pi r equals 30. I'm going to solve this for h by subtracting 2 pi r to the left. And now I have a formula for height. My volume equation has too many variables in it, b, r, and h. I can now get rid of h by substituting. If h equals 30 minus 2 pi r, I can swap that in for h. And now I only have volume equals 
pi r squared times, not h, 30 minus 2 pi r. Distribute pi r squared, you get 30 pi r squared minus 2 pi r to the third. I'm trying to maximize the volume. This is the formula I'm going to play around with. If you're maximizing the volume, the max is going to occur when the derivative equals zero. I'm going to find the derivative of volume and set it equal to zero. So v prime, 60 pi r minus 6 pi r, set it equal to zero. Divide out the greatest common factor there of the uh, between 60 and 6, reduces that to 10 pi r minus pi r squared. Factor out the r, set each factor equal to zero. r equals zero, and r would equal 10 over pi. So these are my critical points, zero and 10 over pi. Well, I know the answer is not gonna be r equals zero because if the radius equals zero, I wouldn't have a cylinder. So I'm guessing that my answer is probably gonna be r equals 10 over pi. I just need to now to verify if that's gonna be a max or min by making a sign chart for V prime. Pick a number to the left and to the right of 10 over pi and plug that into V prime. You're gonna get a positive, which plug a number into the left, I would have used zero. A number on the right, and you're gonna get a negative. So this is going to be a max at 10 over pi. And it's a max because V prime goes from positive to negative. So my radius is gonna be 10 over pi. Don't forget you should check your endpoints of zero and 30. The height and the circumference have to add up to 30, so it could be zero or 30. Uh, we already know it can't be zero because I wouldn't have a radius. And same reason, I uh, can't have 30. Uh, kind of on the same principle there. So this one, maximize your volume. You want a radius of 10 over pi. Next question. This was a very, very common question. You see this come up a lot in calculus. The open top box question made out of a sheet of paper or a piece of tin, where you're cutting corners out of the sheet of paper and you're gonna fold them up and then make a, a box out of it. You can probably Google or YouTube this concept and you'll see lots and lots of other people doing this problem. Here's the setup in front of you though. I'm cutting congruent squares from corners of a 20 by 25 sheet of tin. How big should those squares be so I can make the box with the biggest volume? So here's my sheet of tin that's 20 by 25. I'm gonna cut these pink squares out of each corner. I don't know how big to make them. Let's call them x by x. If they're a square, they have the same dimension, space, and height. So once I cut these squares out, I'm gonna be left with something that looks like up here on the top right. I have little tiny squares, medium squares, or big squares. The bigger the square, the taller my box is. But I might be losing volume if I make a box that's too tall. Same idea, if I make squares that are really tiny, I have a shallow box. I might be losing volume there. I'm probably gonna to wanna to be somewhere in the middle. I fold up the tabs, and then you're gonna have a box to open top. So the dimensions of my box, I'm gonna be left with this highlighted yellow piece. It's not 25 inches long. It's 25 and then I cut out an X on the left, I cut out an X on the right. So I've cut out two X's from that 25. So its dimension is actually 25 minus 2X. The width of the box was 20. I'm cutting out an X from each side. So now this dimension in green here is not 20 inches long. It's 20 minus those two X's. The height of my box is gonna be determined by the size of the X that I cut out. The bigger the X, the taller the box. The volume of my box is now length times width times height. I'm just gonna plug in the three dimensions, length, width, and height. So now I have a new setup for volume. Instead of L, W, and H, I have all X's. Okay, I'm gonna multiply all this together. I'm gonna to multiply the X to the 20 and the 2X, and then we're gonna foil the two binomials. 
Distributing the x, the 20 minus 2x, gives me 20x minus 2x, then FOIL. FOIL everything out, collect like terms, simplify, put it in order. Now you got a formula for volume. I'm trying to maximize my volume. Maxes, again, are going to occur when the derivative equals zero. If I'm maximizing volume, I take the derivative of volume. I'm going to take that derivative and set it equal to zero. There's your equation for B prime in red. Go ahead and set that equal to zero. Now, <clears throat> to solve this one for x, and it's kind of a pain, this one doesn't factor nicely. I would allow you to use your calculator here. I would go to y1, type in 12x squared minus 180x plus 500, and then use my calculator to find the zeros. The zeros are the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are going to be when the derivative equals zero. So one of those is going to be at 3.681. This one is going to be my max. I can verify this by making a sign chart for the derivative. I'm going to evaluate v prime to the right of 3.681 and to the left of 6.81. I'm going to see that there is a sign change here. That's going to verify that my max x, the biggest x I should cut out of the corner, is 3.681 inches. Now I do need to check my endpoints here. And there's actually another x that I should actually check for. Well, the problem is if I take too large of an x, I'm going to have nothing to fold up and no box to make. I can't take an x bigger than 10. If I'm bigger than 10, my dimension is 20, and 10 plus 10 is 20, I'm going to cut away and throw away the entire box. So 10 would be an endpoint. So obviously my max is not going to occur at that endpoint of 10 because my whole box is disappearing. My other endpoint is 0, and that's to take an x value of 0. So don't cut out any corner. If I don't cut out any corner, I don't have any tabs to fold up. So my answer is going to be 3.681. Now you can do all the math and work all that out, but trust me, your sign chart is going to be correct on that. So that's three basic problems on optimization. We're trying to get the most bang for the buck trying to get the most volume out of this uh, piece of tin. And you can guarantee that the post office does this when they're trying to calculate how much to charge for shipping because they use boxes and they're using volume. So they're giving you those pre-made USPS boxes and they're trying to give you the least amount of material with the most amount of volume so that their costs go down. So yep, this stuff does get used in the real world. And uh, hopefully you understand a little bit more on how we can use calculus in the real world. Again, maximizing optimization. Take her easy.